Newer cryptocurrency traders often struggle with leverage trading. Concepts such as margin, leverage, position sizing, and short selling, liquidation. These are often confusing concepts to newer traders. So in today's video, we're going to walk you through all the nuances that you're going to need to understand to have success on these platforms. If you've ever wondered why Ethereum USD position sizes are different, if you've ever wondered why you haven't made as much money on a short sell as you should have, we're going to explain all that in today's video in Trading Crypto 101. If you are looking for a leverage platform of your own to trade on, I highly recommend you go check out Bybit. I made the switch myself after seeing how great their customer service was, how easy their platform was to use, and the same security that I would get on any other cryptocurrency platform. If you guys would like to test out Bybit for yourself, they will give you up to $60 in margin to test their platform out if you use the link in the description down below or go to bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. With that said, guys, let's get cracking in today's episode. Okay, so this is how inverse, inverse futures contracts work when trading Bitcoin, okay? This is how short selling works on inverse futures contracts, okay? We have to make a few clarifications here. We have to define our words because words are important. So first thing, margin. What is margin? Margin is nothing more than the collateral required by an exchange to put on a certain position size. When you margin trade, you are accepting loaned money from a broker, from an, which generally comes from an investment bank, or on the case of Bitfinex and other exchanges like that, for example, a PTP lending pool, for example. But either way you want to cut it, wherever the money comes from, you are borrowing money that you do not have to take on a position in the market that is larger than you otherwise normally would have, right? That's, that is what margin is. Margin is just, okay, I want to trade one Bitcoin. I only have half a Bitcoin. So you go to BitMEX and BitMEX is like, yeah, sure, man. We'll give you half a Bitcoin on top of your half a Bitcoin to take, to trade one full Bitcoin, right? But you're going to have to put up your half a Bitcoin as collateral, right? That's how, that's all margin is. Margin equals collateral, okay? Leverage is literally nothing, okay? Um, all leverage is, all leverage is, is a slider that influences how much collateral is required. That's it. So if you slide the leverage slider to 1x, that means you are trading with no margin, okay? So that means that BitMEX is not gonna loan you any money. If you slide that, lev that leverage slider to 2x, BitMEX is going to let you take on twice as much of whatever you want. Allow you to, not automatically increase your position size 2x, right? You have to actually put on the trade. So all that means 2x is you need to put up 50% of margin. You can take on twice what you have. 3x, you can put on three times. You need to put up a third margin. You need to put up a third of collateral, 33%. Uh, 25x leverage will allow you to trade a position 25 times larger than whatever margin you put up, okay? And you're only required to put up 1 25th of that margin, right? So there's a couple of ways that they're the same thing, but however you want to think about it, either the either you're, every time you move the leverage slide, the more leverage you use, the less margin you have to put up, or the more leverage you use, the more you can take. However you want to look at it, it's the same. They're both equal. But again, I think it like most people are just really, really seem to be really confused by this whole shorting margin and leverage thing. And it's really simple, right? It's really simple. There are there are some boxes on BitMEX or Bybit that are important. Uh, and then that the, the, the most important box is the box called quantity. OK, that is the most important box. Whatever you put in the quantity box is the position size that you're trading with, irregardless of how much leverage uh, how much leverage you're using or how much margin you've put up to take on that position size. All right. If you put on, if you go into BitMEX and you, or buy bit and you put in a thousand into the quantity box and you hit buy, you are trading with a thousand dollars of USD worth of Bitcoin. Doesn't matter where the leverage slider is. The leverage slider could be at two X. It could be at a hundred X. All that leverage slider influences is how much margin you are putting up 
to put on that thousand dollar position size and based on that where your liquidation price is because once you lose your margin they're going to pull their loaned bitcoin that's what liquidation is right if i only put up 10 percent of a thousand dollars so i take a one thousand dollar position size one thousand dollars worth of btc at 10x leverage okay it is not ten thousand dollars it is not ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin it is not i only put on a thousand dollars Sliding that leverage slider to 10X does not make it $10,000. All that leverage slider means is that I am only putting up 10%, whoa, hello. I am only putting up 10% of that $1,000 as collateral to the exchange, as margin. So when I lose that 10% of 1,000, so let's say price moves down, once I lose 100 bucks, which is all I put up as margin, BitMEX is not going to let me lose any of their $900. They're going to liquidate my position. They're going to take my 100 bucks because that's gone. Bye bye. And they're going to pull their $900 back and my, my, my trade is going to be subtle. And I'm going to be minus 100 bucks plus fees. Okay. So um, that is how leverage works. Sliding the leverage slider over does not multiply your position size. It just influences how much margin you have in the trade. And that influences your liquidation price. It's as simple as that, guys. So um, the only thing that matters is the quantity of contracts that you put on. If you do your position size calculation and it says at 1x leverage on the calculator, you always put 1x in, you're going to get a number. That number is going to be the quantity of contracts that you type in. Doesn't matter what leverage you choose. Now you can double check this. There are going to be two boxes that you want to look at. And I think this is confusing for people. So on Bybit and BitMEX, they're the same. There's a, there's a little box that says order value. That is going to tell you how much BTC or XBT, if you're on BitMEX, uh, how much that quantity of contracts is worth in BTC. So you, if you want to do the math, you just take whatever that number is next to order value multiplied by the current exchange rate of BTC to USD, and you're going to see the dollar value of your position size should be almost identical to the number of contracts you're putting in. This is very, very important on Ethereum USD because I think a lot of people get wrecked trading on the Ethereum USD perpetual swap contract on BitMEX, and that's because one contract does not equal $1, okay? Do the math. Uh, it is, it's inversely tied to the XBT USD index. So $1 on, a, on, on FUSD is actually closer to like two or three, okay? So you need to put on a significantly smaller number of contracts so like, for, for example, uh, you know, um, somebody, you know, got a hold of me in the group and they're like, Hey man, I just put on $9,600 worth of contracts. And all of a sudden I'm trading with darn near, you know, $18,000. It was actually more than that. It was like $18,000, $19,000 position size. I'm like, right, right. Cause you need to double check that order value, right? Cause that order value is going to display how much an F or XPT your trade is worth. And you need to do the math just to double check. But once you understand the conversion rate, you just make sure that the order value is correct. But and this is actually easily taken care of with the position size calculator that we provide because it also spits out the BTC number. And then you can just reference when you're taking that FUSD is the BTC position size uh, equal to the order value. All right. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then cost. The, the box that says cost is not how much your order's worth. That is just how much margin it's going to cost you. Right. That is going to be the initial margin requirement. So if you slide the leverage slider further to the right, that um, that cost is going to decrease. If you slide it to the left, take less margin, that number is going to go up because it's going to cost you more to put on a trade with less leverage because they're going to loan you less. So leverage slider does not matter. Uh, it only influences your liquidation price and your amount of margin you're putting up. So here's what I mean to say with all this. This is the natural. So first off, I think that's super fundamental. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I feel like this is really, really, really difficult for some people. And I, and if it is, I don't mean to be disparaging. I just wanted to explain that in a very, very clear way, because I've explained it a lot over the past few weeks, especially for some reason, because we flip bearish. And I know a lot of you guys are unfamiliar with shorting and that's fine. You guys are learning. I'm very patient and I'm here to help you out. But I just want to make sure that you guys get that. Cause I feel like I've repeated myself and said the same thing a lot. And it seems like I keep still getting the same question. So Leverage does not matter. Leverage does not change your position size. You have to type in the position size you want. Changing your leverage before or after that only changes the amount of margin that you have into the trade and affects your liquidation price. Doesn't change. So if you put on $1,000 in quantity, price goes up 10%, you make 100 bucks. 
Doesn't matter if the leverage slider is a hundred or at one. You make a hundred bucks, you make 10% off a thousand minus fees. That's it. Um, okay, so when we're talking about hedging, so so now we need to talk about something else that's very important, right? And then we're gonna get back into the analysis and we've got a lot more to talk about today. When we're talking about trading on BitMEX or Bybit, those are inverse futures contracts. What that means practically for you is that you are already 1x long the moment you deposit funds on that exchange because you are holding Bitcoin. That means if Bitcoin's price, that means the amount of Bitcoin that you have will not change unless you buy or sell, but the dollar value of that Bitcoin will change based on the current exchange rate of Bitcoin to the dollar, okay? Now, I don't like that. I value my wealth in dollars, okay? Not in Bitcoin. I will lose Bitcoin to make more dollars. And if I can increase both simultaneously, that's great. But you need to think in your head, in your mind, what you want to maximize ahead of time. If you want to maximize dollars, you're going to trade a certain way. If you want to maximize Bitcoin, you're going to trade a certain way. If you want to try and maximize both, you're basically going to trade the exact same way you would trade to maximize BTC. Okay. Um, so when you deposit money onto Bybit or BitMEX or Deribit or, or FTX or, or anywhere, that that is that is a leveraged exchange really on on by any exchange really any any cryptocurrency exchange you deposit bitcoin onto you are already long you are already in a long position because you are holding bitcoin meaning your dollar valuation will change based on the exchange rate right bitcoin's price goes up against the dollar you will make money usd you will not make more bitcoin unless you take a trade uh you will lose dollar value if btc usd moves down but you will not lose btc so keep that in your head. Next thing is when you go short on BitMEX, you are not going to lose dollar value if price goes up. Now, I know what the exchange says in that unrealized PL column. It says, hey, you're losing money. You're not. You are only losing Bitcoin. If you have $1,000 on BitMEX and you go short 1,000 contracts, so equal to $1,000, you have locked in 1,000 US dollars because you are already 1X long. So you are just going 1X short. You are flat. It is, the, it is the same as sitting in cash. If Bitcoin's price goes up, you will lose Bitcoin, but you will not lose the value of what that original position size was worth. Do the math. Doesn't matter what that P&L column says, the math is what matters, okay? So if you have $1,000, and you put on a thousand a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, that is, and you put on a thousand dollars short, and price pumps up a thousand percent. Meaning, you, I mean, I mean, a th like, well, that's you probably you lose all your Bitcoin at that point. But let's just say it pumps up a hundred percent. Price two x's overnight, right? Um, you're not, you're still gonna have a thousand dollars. You're gonna have significantly less Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin is significantly worth more. So all that unrealized PL column is showing you if you are not taking on risk. So if you take if you take a larger short position than uh, how much dollars you have, now you're losing money if price goes up. But if you only put on what you have, if price starts moving up, the only thing that P unrealized PL column is displaying to you is your opportunity cost. It is that that is equivalent to this is how much money you would be making had you gone long instead of gone short. But the nice thing about going short is that you are hedging your dollar value, which to me is what matters. I want to have the same amount of dollars when I wake up as I went to bed. So you can have a short position open at all times. So if you are a trader who trades for USD value, you are hedging your position sitting in cash. The same as moving from Tether to Bitcoin if you want to take a trade. So there are a lot of traders I know, and there are times when I do this, like right now, for example, for me, where I have a, uh, not a full risk, but a hedge short open on something like BitMEX Z19, which is the farthest out expiration date. You know, let's say I've got $50,000 um, in capital and BTC, I have a $50,000 short position on Z19 at 1x or 2x or 3x leverage, generally 3x leverage, uh, because that way I can use my margin for something and my liquidation price is still going to be pretty far away. Um, you're not going to lose any dollars. doesn't matter when you close it out. You won't lose any dollars. 
You will not lose any dollars. You will lose Bitcoin if price goes up. That's You can do the math yourself. I'm not crazy. I've been doing this for years. It's just the way that it works. People deposit money. And this is worse on Bybit because Bybit is better than BitMEX and shows you the dollar value of the crypto you're losing. This is nice for unrealized PL and a profitable trade or an unprofitable trade. So it lets you see the actual dollar amount. So it's not like a goddamn casino over on BitMEX where they just show you XBT. But in your mind, you're going to think I'm losing that money. You're not. It's again, it's just showing you how much money you're not making by being long. You're not losing dollars. That's so critical for people to understand. Now, Let's say you have $1,000 on BitMEX, you go short 1,000 contracts at 3x leverage, all right? That means you only have uh, $330, give or take, uh, it margin in the short trade. You know what you can do with that other 660? Whoa, hey, what's going on? How you doing, late? Yeah. Come here often? Do you know what you can... Uh, thank you so much, Fire9BR, for following over there on Twitch. Do you know what you can do with that other $660? You can take trades. If you want to take a long trade, you can take a long trade. And now guess what? You are just making money on that long trade and your entire balance isn't fluctuating based upon Bitcoin's price. Only that small segment that you have in the long trade. You don't need to go long uh, 0.66 and go short 0.33 to hedge out at different leverages. That doesn't make sense. That's not how it works. You are already long in the first place by having uh, by having your funds in BTC. So you just figure out how many dollars that BTC is worth and you put on a short position equivalent to that. Now you're hedged. You're sitting in cash. Doesn't matter where price goes. You 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 maintain that same amount of cash. So important for people to understand. But most people don't get it and they end up making mistakes. And I don't want you guys to make mistakes. If you fat finger a button, if you put on the wrong position size, if you put in the wrong number of contracts, that can be a costly mistake. It's very simple. The math is very easy to do. Just sit down, make sure you understand it. Ask lots of questions. I'm here to help you out. My whole staff is here to help you guys out. Just make sure you understand what you're doing before you go on. Okay.